first thing I'm going to do is chalk the wheel on the opposite side that I'm working just so it can't roll. Tongue jack is down so it's not going anywhere but I'm going to have the blocks so I may as well if you watched my recent video about adjusting the tension in wheel bearings, then you know that I found some excessive play in the uh, bushing of my timber and axle. So we're going to take a look at that today. I think we're fine using the stabilizer jack for this type of work. It's not recommended for lifting the entire trailer off the ground, but we just need to get this tire an inch or two up so I can put a jack stand under the frame. This is the main pivot bolt for the timber and suspension. We need to remove this to get to the bushings. I'm holding the head of the bolt with a crescent wrench so I can turn the nut on the back side. Under the trailer, I'm using a torque wrench and a small bottle jack just to break the nut free. With the nut backed off, I can tap on it to drive the bolt out. I'm using the bottle jack again to take some pressure off of the bolt to help pull it out completely. As seen in the previous video, I removed the tassel nut, um, pull the wheel off, clean up the axle, and now I need to remove um, these fasteners here. They are 9 sixteenths. Now I can pull the brake assembly and set it off to the side, being careful not to damage the brake lines. Now back under the trailer, there's this washer with a pin. It has to be removed so that the timberin can drop free. I had to take some weight off that pin by putting the bottle jack under the timberin. Now I can remove the bushings from the timberin. As you can see, this is the part that gets lubricated. The steel cylinder pivots within the polymer bushing. I'm going to clean this up and take a look at the wear on the inside so I have this timberin all cleaned up. Um, this thing is built nice and heavy duty. I don't see any issues with this at all. But these, on the other hand, seem to be the fatal flaw. There's definitely some uneven wear taking place. It looks something like this when it's installed. There's a gap between the two. And that gap can fill with grease, but there's there's nothing really, you know, that causes that to transfer into the, the bearing surface. So I think it's important to use that Zerk fitting in this hole. You can see it in there when I inspect and service the brakes and the wheel bearings, which is uh, annually. I will admit that we put a lot of miles on the trailer. Um, I believe they call for greasing every year or every 12,000 miles. I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up, but I'm probably going to step that up to every few months on the Zerk fitting. Okay, let's take a look at this replacement bushing. These grooves are wider and deeper. And I think they probably have realized that's an area that needed some improving. This is where the grease needs to do its job. It oozes out of these little channels. Again, it doesn't spin, so there's, there's nothing to distribute the grease around. And possibly because of this offset design with, with a wheel, you know, clear out at one end, there may be enough torque that the grease gets compressed up here, that could be part of the problem that's contributing to the uneven wear and the uneven distribution of the grease within this uh, poly bushing. Regardless, I really do like this uh, timber and axle suspension. It does a good job. And um, again, we are on the uh, rough roads a lot. So I'm sure that has contributed to the wear.
the timberin's been cleaned, degreased, rinsed, and treated with OSFO. You know, it needs to set overnight. OSFO is a great rust inhibitor. It's uh, not a primer. It's something that you use on uh, rusty metal. You just need to remove anything that's loose or flaking paint. And then you brush on the OSFO and let it sit overnight and it changes the chemistry of the rust and makes it inert. It's sat overnight. It's been rinsed with fresh water, dried. I'm gonna uh, wipe it down with some paint thinner before painting it with an oil-based enamel. The first coat, I just try to get it on, make sure everything is penetrated into all the little nooks and crannies. And we're not painting a car. It's, I'm trying to uh, paint this just so that it doesn't continue to get rusty. I found if you dab this type of a surface, it'll prevent the, the paint from going down inside versus trying to use a stroke. Um, I'll be flipping it over to get the other side. It should be dry enough to do that pretty darn soon. And we're ready to go again. And we're ready for another coat. I'm trying to be a little more careful with this coat and keep the paint flowing. Luckily, I just got started, so I was able to sweep off the little bit of grass with uh, some paint thinner. Okay, it's stable now. Three coats of enamel. All right, painting is complete. It's had a chance to cure. Okay, this is the second timber and, and I have to come down on them for the kind of paint. There's just not much adhesion to the paint so I mean it's failing all over the place. The other one was almost as bad so I've got to you know clean all this up, use the OSFO again, repaint it and hopefully we'll get a little better paint job than what the original one was. It's important to clean this interior up and, you know, put a light film of grease on it. And I also put a film on this flange here of the bushing just to make things slip in. Um, it is a fit that is pretty snug and you need to um, tap it in. So I'm using a, just a block of good hard wood set on top of the bushing and then tap it in with a small heavy hammer. It's not the sturdiest workbench, but it works for this kind of job. Bushing's in now, and I can lube that up, the inside of that up, and then slip in the axle. I noticed there was a little bit of a burr on the molding of this plastic right around this edge. And so I released that a little bit, you know, just with a small fine round file just to make sure that, you know, it wasn't going to fold that bit of sharp edge, you know, into the interior of the bushing because again, we want this to slide right in. So the next thing I'm going to do is grease this up grease up the piston, and then tap it in. It's really important that this goes straight in. Keep a watch eye on that. Now that I have that going in nice and straight, I'll take it over to the hydraulic press and press that the rest of the way in. When I built this wood splitter, I didn't intend for it to be used for a uh, hydraulic press. Unless you have the proper um, hydraulic type of a press, I highly recommend just taking this part in and have it done at a shop. It's pretty tricky to get both sides equally and 
perfectly flush. When you install the bushing, it's going to compress that plastic enough to where um, the axle is going to be a very snug fit. So these rubber stubs, there's two of them, one there, one forward. Those have to line up with the holes and this needs to be aligned for the uh, pivot bolt. And I have just a small hydraulic jack to help bring things into alignment. It took just a little bit of finagling to get that hole nice and lined up. At this point, I'm ready to install the nut and this washer. But first we need to drill the hole to accept this locking pin. And that goes on the back side. That single hole takes a small collection of drill bits. Start with the bit that matches the actual size of this hole just to get a uh, dimple started. And that will help guide the smaller bits. Um, without a drill press, there's just no way to drill this hole by hand using one drill bit. Hopefully you can see that little dimple that I have started. And because I used the actual size, we know that that's dead center. Now we can drop down to a small bit to give us a pilot hole. It doesn't really matter the actual diameter. I just picked a nice sharp one and something small enough to make that hole easier to drill. Now we want this hole to be just about the uh, full depth of what we are going to use for that pin. Now I can increase the diameter of the drill bit in increments until I get to the final diameter. And lastly, we want to make sure that this pin does in fact insert all the way and flush which it does. So now we can continue with the assembly. Before we put the nut on, we want to use a generous amount of Loctite here on the threads. And so what I do is start out with a small torque wrench. Once I hit it tightened up with this, then I'll switch over to the bigger torque wrench. It's a little more awkward to use, so That's it. That's the sound of the torque. I really like this little compact uh, grease gun for small jobs like this. It takes a three ounce cartridge instead of the big awkward type. This one you just pump it by ripping it with one hand. I've also added this locking uh, fitting. The standard fitting you just shove it up in there and you know hope that it clicks in and stays put. This one actually you know, locks on and then squeeze it to relieve the pressure and it just comes right off. So there's no struggle and there's no worry about it being connected to that Zerk fitting to the point that, I mean, they can be really difficult to get off. You definitely don't want to break off one of those Zerk fittings. 